I have always loved the original Game Boy. And one of the first projects that I showed off on here a few years ago was what I called the Game Boy Zero, where I took one of these things, replaced the guts with a Raspberry Pi Zero, a new screen, and some other things to make it play games from a ton of different systems. A lot of people loved the project and took the idea and ran with it and improved it in all kinds of ways. You can see this one that I put together a while back has an analog stick, high res screen, and a more powerful Raspberry Pi in there that can handle N64. One of those people who really pushed the idea farther than I had was Kite, who's kind of famous within this scene uh, for his all-in-one boards that you can just drop into aftermarket shells so that you can make these things much easier than you could otherwise. This project is kind of a direct descendant of the Game Boy Zero, just a little bit smaller. Okay, a lot smaller. All right, so this is what I'm calling the Gem Boy Zero. I know the name's a little bit weird. I'll explain that in a minute. In this video, I'm gonna go over what's inside of it, all of the features, give you a little bit of background about the project, uh, but I'm gonna keep this one pretty short. In a couple of weeks, I'll have a follow-up video showing how to put one together, which is also when I'll make the shell and the other parts available, put the STL files up for 3D printing, all that good stuff. Now, I'm actually gonna be giving away the one that I'm making in that follow-up video. So if you wanna enter to win that, check out the link in the description. But for now, let me show you around it a little bit. It's got a 1.44 inch screen with a laser cut acrylic screen lens. The bezel is cut out of vinyl on a Cricut machine. On the front, it's got ABXY buttons, start and select, and a surprisingly usable D-pad. All of this is 3D printed, by the way. Up top, there's a micro USB charging port, access to the SD card, and the power switch, which also brings up an on-screen menu so you can do things like adjust the volume, turn Wi-Fi on and off, trigger a safe shutdown, and even bring up an on-screen keyboard. And yes, before anyone asks on the back, there are L and R buttons. Uh, they're kind of part of the shell like I did on the Minty Pie. As far as what kind of games you can play on it, it's a Raspberry Pi Zero running RetroPie inside of there, just like on the original Game Boy Zero. So you can play games from Game Boy, NES, Game Boy Advance, Super NES, Genesis, really any console from around that era, as well as some arcade games. Some PlayStation games actually run pretty well on it too, uh, but you can pretty much count out N64 or anything beyond that. As for battery life, there's an 850 milliamp battery in there which lasts a little over two hours with Wi-Fi off playing Super NES. That might not sound like much, but remember, this thing is tiny. Like I said, the shell and buttons are completely 3D printed. I modeled them from scratch in Fusion 360 using reference images of a Game Boy, and I printed it on a couple of different resin-based printers. Getting the models and the prints right were like 90% of the work in this project because the electronics were already done for me. Let me explain. If you've seen some of my other projects, you might remember this little guy a couple of years ago. It was similar to the Game Boy Zero project, but in a Sega Dreamcast VMU shell. That was the memory card that the Dreamcast used that had a screen and buttons on it. I made this one from scratch, and then, just like with the Game Boy Zero, Kite came in and improved just about everything in that project with an all-in-one board that you can drop into a shell and make it way easier and cleaner. And he called that board the Circuit Gem, hence Gem Boy Zero. Well, that's actually the same board that I'm using in here. Originally, I was just gonna make a printable VMU shell so people could stop chopping up all the mint condition ones out there, but I realized I didn't have to make it look like a VMU. So, on the most recent revision of that board, Kite extended the button contact traces so that I could shift over the X and Y buttons, and he even added start and select buttons for me. Huge thanks to him for doing that, by the way. I did have to source a few parts to make this work, though. For example, the screen is shifted up compared to the VMU, so it needed a ribbon cable and a connector to extend the screen cable, and then obviously I couldn't reuse the VMU button membrane, so I had to find some generic ones that I could use with the 3D printed buttons. Just the process of finding those parts and waiting on shipping from China every time I wanted to try different parts when one didn't work out, that was a lot of the reason that this project took so long. So now for a bit of bad news. Kite has actually said that the batch that he just shipped out a couple of months ago was going to be the last of his all-in-one boards. Now, I know that a lot of people wanted to use these shells for their builds, so that's why I went ahead and followed through with this project. However, he did tell me that he held back a bunch of these boards that he's going to put up for sale here in the next couple of months. So, 
If you want to make one of these, make sure that you're following him on Instagram, sign up for his mailing list on his website, all that good stuff. All right, well, I think that about covers it for now. Again, keep an eye out for that follow-up video in a couple of weeks, which is when I'll show you how to put one together and make all the parts available, the STL files for 3D printing, all that good stuff. Until then, thanks for watching to the end, and I'll see you guys next time.